Wonderful. Thanks very much, Alistair. Much appreciated. Yeah, so I'm going to be uh, saying a little bit about teaching QGIS in kind of two parts here. So a bit about certification and a bit about uh, running QGIS in the cloud. Uh, and just to say, to start off with, so thank you very much to OSGO UK and all the individuals behind that for bringing this all together. Uh, and also all the other presenters and hosts and co-hosts, but also the attendees as well. You know, we, we couldn't present this without someone to present it to, so thank you all for coming. Uh, and it, please do donate. So whether that's donating your money to OSGO or Map Action or a, another charity of your, your choice or your time as well. We've heard a little bit about open source and I'll say a bit more about why donating to open source is important for the work we do. So it's a, a talk of two halves, um, both related to QGIS, but two kind of different aspects of training. So uh, first of all, uh, the QGIS certification program. Um, and this is kind of quite key to um, what open source is and how it's funded, because the certification program provides some funds for this. We heard a little bit in the introductory talk this morning uh, from uh, Joe and Angelos about how open source, what open source is and how we fund it. And I, I looked up a couple of interesting figures. Uh, so the OSGO, their budget and accounts uh, are open and you can look up their budget. And that they uh, spent nearly $65,000 on projects, supporting different projects in 2019. Um, and they supported some really fundamental stuff. So they, they supported some of the kind of key libraries that underpin the work we do, like the GDAL library and OGR, uh, and supporting some of the kind of implementations on GitHub. Uh, and equally, they've also supported various different products. So Open Layers um, uh, got $3,000. Um, they had a very detailed budget about what they're going to spend it on. And I, we, I came from a talk just now about using Open Layers, so key he support, PostGIS as well. And, and QGIS as well, uh, and highlighting specific things to improve with, with QGIS. So the, the kind of money uh, is quite important, really. Equally, QGIS itself also has a, a budget, and some of the key aspects of open source software is we need funds to uh, do these sorts of things. So particularly bug fixing, uh, which is really, really important to make a, a product that, that, that works well. Um, but also feeding back into other open source products. So QT5 is one of the big libraries that underpins QGIS and QGIS has supported upstream improvements, so for QT5. And the, the, the really fascinating figure for me is that the total budget for QGIS is nearly a quarter of a million euros, 240,000 euros, and that's, you know, a reasonable amount of money for this sort of thing. Uh, and it's all got to come from somewhere. Um, there's other presentations and other sources that can say more about uh, memberships and that sort of thing. But the QGIS training certificate is a, is a, a small, but I'd say important funding element for this. 15,000 euros they, they want to take in from the training certificate. And so using these certificates is not one of my ways of supporting QGIS. Open source isn't free. Uh, we've had some discussions about this already, um, uh, and QGIS in particular does get quite a lot of support, which is great. Um, said a little bit about the budget, but they also have crowdfunded additions. So uh, North Road has done a couple of uh, quite high-profile high campaigns for uh, adding extra features, both for QGIS processing, uh, their kind of model design equivalent of ArcGIS's model builder, uh, but also in the print layouts and graphs area as well and they've added the uh, Plotly library to the print layouts which is, is amazing and it, it really adds what you can do and Lutra have also done uh, quite a lot of work in the 3D support so there's lots of ways of supporting open source. So the, the certification program specifically it's centrally backed by QGIS Foundation and you uh, as a training organisation you, you apply to be approved by them and you have to say a little bit about what your training is and provide some materials, some examples of, of what you do to show you are a, 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 good, a good trainer and can do good training courses. Once you're approved, you can issue certificates for people who attend these courses. Uh, and each certificate it has a donation of 20 euros that goes to QGIS. So that's about 16 pounds or so. 
Uh, and when you actually generate the certificates, each one has a unique link. So it'll give you, it has a URL on the bottom and anyone can go to that URL and it will confirm that that's a legitimate certificate and it was issued by QGIS. It is a still relatively new setup. Uh, there are a few kinks still being worked out, uh, but it generally works quite well, uh, the, the way it's set up. To actually pay for the certificates, I have to do a manual payment. Um, um, so I you know, use a, a credit card to pay, but that works fine, but it has to be set up manually. And in the last kind of year or so, uh, I've issued 17 certificates. Um, and, you know, it, in some ways it may not seem like a huge amount, 340 euros, but it all contributes. So hopefully my 340 euros makes a contribution to the 15,000 euros for the budget for the certificates, which makes then makes a contribution to the 240,000 UGIS budget. So it's, it's, it's a little bit, but if everybody does a little bit, it can add up quite a lot. In terms of the take up of the certificates, that actually depends a bit on who's paying, so who actually stumps up with the money in the end. So for my training, I often work with host institutions and sometimes they pay uh, for the certificates for the participants and they often want to support open source initiatives and this is a great way to get some money out of uh, institutions like universities who it's often tricky to get money out of. Sometimes we split it 50-50, so sometimes the host pays something and I, as Geospatial Training Solutions, contribute something. Uh, and sometimes the individuals uh, pay, so the people who go on the course, and sometimes they pay. So that's a little bit of a whistle-stop through a QGIS certificate. Um, uh, and arguably the kind of larger chunk of the talk is uh, QGIS in Amazon Workspaces. In true conference style, I attended a session earlier and I think there's a different Amazon Workspace uh, app that might be really useful for what I've done with this, Amazon App Stream. So I may need to change all these slides uh, after this presentation, but I'll tell you what I know now and then we can go from there. So I've try and, been trying to think about running QGIS in the cloud and my kind of background to this is that I run uh, training workshops, often previously they've been in-person workshops uh, and it's in a, a computer lab uh, and that's great because all the computers are exactly the same setup and I can ask the people who manage the lab please install this version of QGIS and they'll set it up and it will be working and that'll be marvellous. Obviously we've now had a, a big increase in remote training because I've, we can't travel around to actually deliver these courses um, and users have to use their own computers. Um, and they have to install QGIS themselves. Um, and generally that's fine and I try and structure things to make sure everybody can install the software they want on their own machine beforehand and then it will work when it should. Um, but however that's not always the case. I've had a couple of users who are using work laptops and their work IT security is quite restrictive so they don't have admin rights so they can't install the software. Um, Sometimes IT can arrange to get it set up and running for them, but often there's not time to do that. And sometimes the software just won't install. I have no idea why, it just doesn't like me for some reason. So what do we do in that case? So that, this is what took me to QGIS in the cloud. Um, I got the idea from Aston. They offer a service called QGIS in the cloud. Um, and and they, they seem to offer it quite a bit as a part of their, their package. So originally I toyed with the idea of using the OSGO Live, uh, which is a, an image uh, and you can run it on a virtual machine that includes, includes GI, QGIS and a whole suite of other open source geo related things. Um, however, for a, a local install on someone's machine, if I'm asking them to run something like uh, VirtualBox or something like that, they still need admin rights to set that up and run it. So that won't really solve that problem. And it's also quite complicated to do. You know, the, a lot of the students who are struggling with software don't really want to install a whole another set of software uh, because it makes it more complicated. I did think about doing a remote school on a virtual machine. They use like uh, an EC2 service, which is a, a machine that Amazon Web Services provide. And you can install your own software on that and that would work, uh, but it's quite complicated. Amazon do also do this Amazon Workspaces as, a, as an offering. So this is what they call desktop as a service. So you, you set it up and then you get a, a virtual machine you can use for whatever you want. 
Uh, and that's the, the route I went down. Uh, this was before I came across Amazon AppStream, which is a, a new one to me, and it, AppStream might be a better solution for this. So using Amazon Workspace is you can set up a, a kind of template where you have your operating system already set up, but also QGIS or whatever other piece of software you want. And then you can use that template and make it available to multiple users. Uh, and they, they have call this a, a bundle. So you have an image, which is a kind of template, and then you bundle it up and then you can set it out to, to one user or to 10 users or 100 users if you so wish. You give them the name and email address and Amazon sends them out a message to say, um, this is how we're doing. Um, uh, and it'll send you the password and that side of things as well. Um, from the user's point of view, they get this email to say, here's your workspace, please download. And this is an app. So this is the, the app the, the user sees and they can install it on their machine even without admin rights, it still works. Uh, and then you, they type in their credentials, so they'll have a username and a password, and they click sign in. So very, very simple. Um, it will spend a few minutes getting set up and loading, and then it loads up as a, a virtual machine. So this is the kind of the initial snapshot that you get from Amazon Workspaces. Uh, I did spot that they did install uh, Firefox by default, uh, and had not installed Google Chrome by default, which amused me slightly, given Amazon and Google's uh, mutual reluctance to get on with each other. Interestingly, this does work across full screen, across multiple monitors. So in the workspace, if you set it to go to full screen, you can have multiple monitors and it will work all within that workspace, which I would thought was quite neat. Amazon also have these different kind of levels of uh, computer power. So they have one called power and one called performance. And I'll say a little bit more about those in a minute. But QGIS worked very well on the, the, the power version and even a quite graphically intense process like digitizing where you need to have a very quick response to be able to move the nodes and do the digitizing that worked well, even on the, the performance one, which is a little bit lower. So this is their kind of selection of uh, different options. So power is the first one that I use and that's got four CPUs, virtual CPUs and 16 gigabytes of RAM. Uh, so that, you know, that's got a reasonable amount of welly and can do quite a lot. The performance one, uh, I also use, uh, and that's got two CPUs and seven and a half gigabytes of RAM. So a bit lower spec, but still, you know, reasonably responsive, still works reasonably well. So for the, uh, the user who uses this for a training session, we didn't do anything particularly computationally processed. Um, in the session. So we opened QGIS, we loaded some data, we did some car repair maps, we loaded in the OSM base map, and we did some thing composer stuff. So, you know, it's not high intensive stuff. They did say they found it a bit tricky juggling their Zoom window and their AWS window, um, and because they were on a, a laptop with one screen. So that was a bit tricky to try and get the work together, but they worked, worked okay with that. And they were really happy because at one point they thought they wouldn't be able to do it because they couldn't install the software. So this is a, a good way of getting around that. It probably took me about two hours or so to set up initially. Uh, and this included working out what the workspace was and how it worked and that side of things. Now I've done it before, you can get it set up in five minutes. Um, it takes about 20 minutes to actually initialize, but you can go off and make a cup of tea in that time. Uh, so it's very quick. To, quick and easy to deploy. In terms of pricing, um, some interesting statistics. They, uh, you can have an operating system with Windows or uh, Linux. Uh, I went for Windows. I'm trying to keep things simple for, for people who are not technical experts. Uh, and for this one, they have you can either pay a monthly fee, so $32 for the, the value one. Uh, and that's just a one-off fee to access the virtual machine anytime you want for the month. Or you can do an hourly basis where you pay $11 for the month and then an hourly rate depending on what set you want. So I, for the performance one, 53 cents an hour. It, the, the price varies a little bit depending on where you are. Uh, you can set in Amazon where you're uh, which data center you want to use, essentially, and it varies a little bit. Essentially, the US is cheaper than here, but like a like cent or half a cent an hour, so it's, it's an irrelevant difference, really. 
I generally, as a rule, do Europe, UK for any of the work. So any data we're dealing with stays in the UK. For workspaces, they have this kind of quick setup thing that in Europe only works in Europe Highland. So that's where I ran all of this because it's a lot easier to set up. One chance. Thanks. Once you're actually using the VM, uh, you can change the spec dynamically. So if you're using the performance one uh, and you need a bit more welly for some of the work you're doing, you can up it uh, to the power one. Uh, it takes about five minutes to reconfigure, and then you can log in and carry on with what you were doing. And then you can downgrade again as well to save a bit of money. For, in terms of costs, I always find with Amazon, you've got their kind of uh, boilerplate cost that says what, it, what it's going to be, but these are all without VAT, and I have to pay VAT on this as well. So working out what it actually costs in reality is always a bit of a, a guesswork. But for the this course where I had one user who was using QGIS on a one-day course, uh, it ultimately cost me about fifteen pounds, fifteen sixteen pounds, which you know I didn't think was that bad uh, to give them the resources they need to actually do the work. They also do, Amazon are also doing uh, an offer uh, until the end of June 2020 as a response to, to COVID. So you can get three workspaces at a standard level for no cost and one workspace at a performance level for, for no cost. Uh, and I'm actually using this at the moment for one of my other courses uh, for a user who's having trouble with getting R from the libraries installed on their work machine. Uh, and it's a great backup option to give someone a, a VM they can use for the course. Amazon Help is really, really useful. They do a very good step-by-step -step walkthrough, so I'd really recommend that. If you do end up wanting to experiment with this and they don't have the offer on anymore, uh, the, the $11 monthly fee you pay pro rata when you start it up. So if you want to experiment and try and keep the cost to minimum, try it towards the end of the month because then you pay a relatively small amount for the setup fee. We, I did discover a great conversation on Twitter. Uh, James Cheshire started up, he's a professor at UCL, and they're thinking, how are we going to provide uh, facilities for students, given that they're all likely to be taught from home? And so, you know, they're the typical university where they've got no kind of money to spend, really, and they're trying to find some way of providing this IT support. Uh, and there's a whole slew of different options that they could use. So we talked about the virtual machines, um, OSGO Live got mentioned, Portable GIS, XYZ got mentioned, R Studio Cloud as well is a great resource for those doing stuff with R. Uh, Edina have a, a service called Notable, which is uh, Python, I believe, Python notebooks. Uh, Esri do ArcGIS notebooks as well, which is new to me. Uh, and there's various discussions about Docker images and all the rest of it, you know. My big feeling on this is there's so many options out there. Uh, if you're you in, as an individual are trying to set it up, use what you know. Uh, if you haven't got time to learn something new, stick with what you know. And that was why I ended up with Amazon, because I've used Amazon Web Services for other bits and pieces, and it, it worked quite well. But there are a huge collection of different options out there. Thank you very much for listening, uh, and I'll, I'll very happily answer any questions now. That's brilliant. Thank you very much, Nick. Uh, and we do have some questions for you. So um, the first one comes from David Murray, and it's about the um, QGIS certification. How is the coursework evaluated? Um, do, you, do you know if he means by the trainer or by QGIS? Uh, I don't know. So okay. maybe if you can answer both. <laughs> okay. So oh, by the trainer, he's just said. By the okay. trainer. Okay. There's no... You know, there's no, in the program, there's no formal requirement for the trainer to do any uh, evaluation. Did the student actually learn what they're supposed to be learning? You know, uh, in, as a trainer myself, you know, I say that someone needs to turn up to the course and needs to engage with the, the material. Um, but there's no, there's no rules on that. It's up to the trainer, really. I've occasionally had people who've turned up, you know, a little way into the course and, you know, usually that's fine. If they don't turn up to lunchtime, then they're probably not going to get the certificate, but ultimately that's down to, to me, really. Cool. Or the, the training, I should say, who's doing the training course. Um, and we've had a, a question here um, on the QGIS and Amazon workspaces from Burke, and he says that he 
he doesn't understand the motivation for using Amazon Workspace. So could you be could you just clarify that? Because he's, he's stating, isn't it already easy to install QGIS on personal desktops? If you have a personal desktop that your uh, attendee on the course is using, then yes, it is fairly straightforward to install QGIS, and I'd really recommend that. The, I'm really using Amazon Workspaces where people can't do that, either because the only laptop, the only computer they have is from work and it's locked down so they don't have admin rights, or if they have a, a low spec machine that wouldn't have enough uh, welly to do some of the analysis if you're doing particularly complex analysis. And then sort of, again, on the um, Workspaces side, a uh, question from Dave Partridge. Um, what sort of internet speeds do you need? Lots of his customers and trainees are in remote locations away from super fast broadband uh, and uploading is especially slow. So do you have any sort of comments on that? Yeah, that's a, that's a really good question. And uh, to be fair, I've not, I've not really tested this. Um, the, the work I've done, I've got, uh, I've worked on a, the connection where I am at the moment is uh, fiber to the premises, and we get it's quite good actually. We get I'd have to look out, I think eight to ten megabits upload and then 20 down, so this is very good. I've tried it somewhere else that is on a, a slower connection, uh, I think that's two or three megabits up and 10 or 11 down, and it still works reasonably well. Uh, so I don't think the connection is crucial. Um, it, yeah, it would be really interesting to try. And it'd be great if someone's got a nice slow connection that they want to experiment with. Uh, give us a shout and I can set you up and we'll see how it goes. Cool. Um, question from Yusuf. He says, are there any discounts for students such as PhD students? Um, I think that's in relation to the workspaces stuff. Yeah, um, not that I'm aware of. Uh, I know Amazon, I've not never seen any references to discount. They do have a Amazon educate which is a it's a different service to offer different facilities and i think there may be some uh discounts for, for student users but i'm not sure but it'll probably stay on the website so i'd recommend having a look at some of the web services website and see what they say on that okay cool um jumping back to certification uh so question from etienne uh what is the requirement to make an organization certified by QGIS? So do you need to share materials? Uh, you know, how, how do you become certified? Is it? Yeah, so there's, uh, there's a very good outline on their website and the, I think a link was in the, the presentation. Uh, and you have to uh, send them an email, say you want to register and send them some examples of materials that you've taught. So um, I see. The materials I sent, I use a, a selection of a, a presentation and a workbook, and, uh, and I sent the same out. Um, and then it is, I can't remember off the top of my head, but there's a, there's a group of people who look at it and then decide is that okay? Or do they need more information now? They'll let me know. Okay, cool. Um, question from Ujaval, who asks Have you had any users use Amazon Workspace successfully on Linux? So he's had participants who have had issues installing QGIS on Linux, so can see the value of, of a system like Amazon Workspace. Uh, no, I've, I've never used it on Unix of any sort. Um, one of my big observations is that people who are struggling to install QGIS for whatever reason, because they've not got a great laptop or because they don't have admin rights, I'm going to be very broad brush here, but tend to be less technical. So asking them to work on a Unix machine would, would be would not be a good move, I would say. We're trying to make it as simple for them as possible. I think there's probably great potential with uh, Amazon App Stream here, where you can set up, as I understand it, and just an app. So you could get QGIS running on that, and they could access just QGIS, and then you can remove the whole layer of the operating system. So that might be a good move as well. And I think it's even cheaper as well. Okay, cool. And a final question, uh, which is from me, is um, how easy is it to get data into Amazon Workspaces so that you can actually do something <laughs> in terms of the training and stuff like that? Yeah, no, that's a good question. Um, uh, they all have a internet connection. 
So you can download data into them very easily. For all of my training, I, I make users download data because it's good practice for them. And they're definitely going to have to download data. So sometimes I provide it as a zip file and just give them a web address and say, download it from here. And other times I make them go off to Edina or the census website or whoever could actually download it themselves. And that, that's very, very straightforward. Um, does that kind of answer your question? Yeah, yeah, no, that, that's great. Thank you. Um...